Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for Good News on Entertainment. I'm your host, Carly Boyette. We have a big show for you tonight. So big, in fact, we are only highlighting one film. Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world. The film is now in theaters. I had a chance to see it before it was released, and it's amazing. The acting is phenomenal. It stars Chris Davis and Force Whitaker. And tonight, I speak with George Foreman himself, along with the VP of Affirm Films. It's going to be a great night as we talk about the power of God and how he can change lives and why getting these stories told is so important. But before we go any further tonight, let's take a look at the film. And as you're about to see, George Foreman himself has a quick message for you to start it off. You know, it took me a long time until I was ready to tell my story on the big screen. But with George Tillman at the helm, I knew I was in good hands. My life, my journey would be honest, heartfelt, and entertaining. When you get knocked down, you get back up again, both in life and in the ring. It's as simple as that. Thank you all for being here, and God bless you all. Listen to me, George. You got a punch like I've never seen. But in every battle, the greatest foe that we will combat is in here. Live one way your whole life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. George should change his name from poor man to poor man. <laughs> to hurt. Freedom. Go, go, Springer! What's my name now, fool? Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Where's all that rage coming from? I don't from? have any rage. And it becomes all you know. Let's thank God for the food, y'all. I bought the food, mama. George Foreman ain't no new champ. He is the new chump. We gonna get it on because we don't get along. Foreman goes down! Who said that? Nobody said nothing, George. George, George, George. George. Oh, George. 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 Hey, oh. Your heart stopped. We thought he was dead. I was. Imagine that. I'm done. I'm not going to box anymore. Do you know what you're walking away from, son? I want to spread the word of God and what I saw. How's being a preacher going for you? It's hard. Harder than getting punched in the face. Sometimes it feels about the same. Hey, fellas. Come on and enjoy yourself. Power company said we never paid the bill. Really? There's only two things I know how to do. That's box and preach. The preacher won't pay the bills. You made me something once, Doc. You can do it again. It is my destiny to win the heavyweight championship belt again. Last time they saw me, I looked like Superman. So now you look like the Michelin Man. This ain't no beauty contest. Michael Moore is 26 and unstoppable. How can you beat that man? Foreman is considered an old man in this young man's game. Now, it's never. Mr. Foreman, that funny little grill deal you signed is starting to generate some substantial checks. Really? Now I'm just surprised they shows a big old fat guy like me to sell a deal <laughs> to help people get lean. <laughs> George Foreman, such an honor to get uh, some time with you today. I had a chance to watch the film last night and I was blown away. I, I love this idea. Is I, I think people think they know who you are. Uh, you've certainly been a part of my childhood growing up. You were a household name. But to really hear the backstory and see it played out uh, on screen like this, it's a beautiful thing. How are you feeling as people get ready to, to watch this around the world? Yeah, Chris Davis. I mean, this this guy put on a giant uh, acting episode there. I couldn't believe it. He had me pulling for him. And I didn't get a chance to pull for uh, the, myself, George Foreman, but the movie brought to life some of the th things I had forgotten. And uh, I cried a little bit. And of course, I applauded in the end. Yeah. One of the biggest things uh, that stuck out to me when watching this film is 
it doesn't shy away from the grit and um, how tough it was growing up on, you know, kind of in, in your childhood and, and you trying to just get people to, to get the respect for you. And when Jesus enters your, your life and when your spiritual eyes are opened, it's such a stark difference of even in the film, you, there's just joy and peace that enter into your story after that as well. Talk about that transition if you can, uh, because I think so many people can relate to finding their identity and their career or the money or all these things the world says they can offer us, but it just means nothing. There's no joy and peace if you don't have the Lord and Savior <laughs> at the end of it, right? I fought so hard for uh, wealth. I wanted to make my mom happy, get a good home, uh, furniture, cars. I fought hard for it and to get respect. And then in the end, finding out that I was fighting the wrong battle. When I had that experience in 77, I found out for a fact that was truly a God. I thought it was just made up stuff. And then to lay on the table and scream, Jesus Christ was coming alive in me. My life has not been the same since. For 10 years, I stopped boxing. I didn't even make a fist for 10 years. All I did was tell people that story. On the street corners, in churches, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me. And I've kept that uh, going this far, thus far. Been the most wonderful thing that happened to me to share something real. Boxers come and go. And I know millions come and go. <laughs> But the something that really stays with me is that experience I had with God and finding Jesus Christ. Well, and it's interesting because you kind of, it is, it's, um, you know, you were a pastor for 10 years and now it's kind of just taken a different form. I think this movie, this film is going to help get the message out about what God, how God can change lives as well. Talk about the timing of this. And I think I've talked with a lot of, because of what I do is my job. I talked to a lot of people like yourself in the entertainment industry um, that post COVID, I think we're starting to see this shift of people saying, you know what, I need to get in the game. I need to get in the ring, pun intended, and really tell people the truth about who Jesus is. Are you seeing this kind of surge in this post COVID world? I think so. When you say get in the ring, there's truly a big fight out there. It's the fight to get faith, and then the fight to keep your faith so that you can keep loving all the people that have come into your life. And some have passed out, but you never lose the love. The time is right now to get that story out there. What advice do you have? Because um, obviously it takes a lot of courage to get in the ring. Uh, it sometimes can take a lot of courage to tell our loved ones about Jesus, to tell about what God has done in your life. Do you have any advice for anyone who's maybe a little nervous about not only making the change and then telling others about the change? What advice do you have in kind of being bold and courageous in our in our faith journeys as well? Yeah, the most important thing is to make that uh, conversion change our lives. And you don't have to talk a lot when you make a real good change. People are going to be trying to find out, why is he smiling? Why is she so happy? Then the story is told in your life. And that's what I've enjoyed most of all, not talking so much, but living a lot. Yeah, and that's what you have done. What is next for you? We have this big film uh, that's debuting now. I think it's going to get a lot of people talking again about your story and again, giving glory to God uh, in it for a new generation as well. What is, where's kind of the status of, of you telling others, you know, about God and what are you doing these days uh, after the filmmaking and all of this? Well, I'm a full-time minister at the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Houston. I'm your best Sunday school teacher. I call myself the best uh, uh, babysitter because people <laughs> come by and drop their kids off the church and say, George will take care of you. And that's what I do. <laughs> Teach Sunday school and I'm, I'm the pastor there at the church and that's what I do most of all and of course I raise grandkids yeah. I have uh about 15 grandkids even three great grandkids so I'm pretty busy with that you know what I love about that answer is that it's so important to maybe use the big platform the big stage but it's also just as important to serve in your local church 
and uh, to be a minister, whatever stage, whatever audience, whatever platform you may have, no, no matter how big or small. Can you speak to that? On And it's funny because you have, you've had some of the biggest stages, but yet here you are also serving. Yeah, 44 years I've been at the little church, very humble, little church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Houston. And I've been there serving because People needed me more than more than I thought, more than anything else, was to really be there, not go away and not be on this uh little trip uh briefly, but to have the long haul of it. And that's what all of us should do is spend some time teaching what we know. And that's about how good God is. Yeah. What is the message as we wrap up here? What's the message that you hope when people see this film? Hopefully it'll have an internal impact. What is that, um, you know, other than the most obvious? What do you hope people will um, take away from this? Yeah, and I tell people all the time in church that there's no, the world is never going to come to an end because it's all about rebuilding. No mm -hmm. matter how far you fall, you can all get up and start rebuilding again. That's what I want everyone to leave the movie thinking, hey, if he can do that, I'm on my way back. Yeah. Oh, well, we are so glad that you are back uh, in uh, the entertainment industry and back uh, seeing you kind of everywhere talk about this film. It truly is an honor to get some time with you today. And we're going to pray that this is going to change lives, this film and your story, and that you'll just continue to get more uh, different avenues to get your story out because it's an important one. That's what it's about, continuing prayer continue yep. prayer thank god you. is good <laughs> god is good wow i love that thank you george all right how can you not love george foreman okay now to my conversation with rich peluso the vp of affirm films which is a division of sony rich and his team are behind some of the biggest faith-based films like soul surfer war room and risen but before we hear the behind the scenes story of what it was like finally getting George Foreman's story on the big screen, let's take another look at the film and hear from some of the actors as well. Listen to me, George. You got a punch like I've never seen. But in every battle, the greatest foe that we will combat isn't here. I'm George Foreman. Got a lot of names to title myself. Former heavyweight boxing champion of the world, grandfather and great-grandfather face of the George Foreman Grill and a minister at the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Action! George Foreman's story is a story about second chances. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. You know exactly what this family needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Amen. George should change his name from four man to poor man. <laughs> he experienced so many limiting circumstances and broke free of those. Down goes Frazier! What's my name now, fool? Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. George Foreman ain't no new champ. He is the new chump. We gonna get it on because we don't get along. Foreman goes down! One of the major themes of the film is what happens when you choose to believe. Who said that? You might say nothing, George. George! In a split second, I was dead and alive again. It's a blood on my face and my hand, and I screamed, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me. And 45 years later, I'm still screaming. The Lord changed my life. George quit boxing for 10 years. How's being a preacher going for you? Hard. Harder than getting punched in the face. Sometimes it feels about the same. He went inward to a spiritual relationship with God. I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to preach in it. Do you believe I could do that? Yes. You got to do it. got to fight for your faith. You're going to fight for anything, fight for that. Amen. Two suspects have been apprehended in this robbery. You OK? His grandmother brought him to me. That same kid. I should have met that kid where he was, not where I wanted him to be. I started this youth center. Hey, Shelly, come on in. Come on in, enjoy yourself. Our company said we never paid the bill. Really? It was all gone. He thought he was going to lose his church. He was going to lose his youth center. There's only two things I know how to do. That's box and preach. The preach, you won't pay the bills. It became about showing people that with true belief, anything is possible. 
I think the Lord spoke to me last night. Well, what did he say? He showed me a vision of you winning the heavyweight championship again. Audiences that love faith-based films will find the George Foreman life story compelling. Mama told me you prayed. Whatever you said to him, it worked. It's a story that everybody could really take from. I want to spread the word of God and what I saw. It is the story of someone who rises up over incredible human conditions. It's now or it's never. It is incredible, impossible, but also true. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! Oh, such an honor now to be taking some time with Rich Peluso. We talked to the big man himself, George Foreman, but it's always so nice, um, I feel, to really pull the curtain back because there's so much that goes into making films, making TV shows, uh, to get to the, po the point of theatrical release. And I think a lot of people don't hear the stories. And a lot of times that's when God can really show up, even in the making of some of these films. So let's start there. Did you see any of that, Rich? What has God taught you in this particular one? You've done so many films that have done so well. What is it about this story in particular that you're going, okay, God, I see you? <laughs> well, listen, it is, um, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it is a miracle that any movie ever gets made. Um, there are just so many projects and ideas and scripts that, I mean, thousands that service the one opportunity uh, to have a movie made. And this one, Big George Foreman, is, is uh, I count among many that I've produced at Affirm Films that had very miraculous um, kind of origins, uh, beginnings. It's the second film that I've done at Affirm Films where it came out of a, um, a random meeting at a coffee shop. Um, so what happened in this situation was I went into a coffee shop, not, not far from my home. I ran into an old friend that actually came out of Christian radio and, um, we were just talking. He asked me what I was up to. And I, you know, I told him that we love stories, true stories about people whose lives have intersected with God. And he asked me if I knew George Foreman's story and I really didn't. So, um, I researched it. Uh, I read it. I got his book. I read it. Um, and then maybe about a month later, um, I was talking to another person and I, I told him my fascination with the story. He said, oh, I've actually connected with one of George's sons. And he gave me his son, George the IV. Uh, his nickname is Big Wheel. And um, gave me his cell phone number. I texted him and I, I told him who I was. I said, I'd love to meet your father and, um, and, and see if he's interested in having his journey told on the big screen. And uh, he texts me back an hour later. He's like, I asked my dad. He wants to know what movies have you done? <laughs> so, so I listed out, you know, Soul Surfer, War Room, Heaven is for Real, Miracles from Heaven. Um, and Big Wheel texted back about five minutes later. He's like, okay, my dad will meet you. So I flew to Houston. I think it was the next day. Um, I sat in his living room for a few hours and told him that I wanted to tell his story. And he agreed with the one provision that this not be just about his boxing career, but it be about his kind of radical transformation and, and conversion to Christianity, his encounter with Jesus Christ. And I told him, I said, well, you've, you're talking to the right guy because that's the story we want to tell. So, you know, that's what attracted me after reading the book and getting to know his journey um, and then the impact he's had on so many lives around him, it just felt like this was the right story for Affirm Films. The right story. And then I feel like timing can be a lot as well. What do you think about the timing? And I feel like post COVID too, I just, there just seems to be a lot happening right now where um, people are craving these types of of stories as well of these comeback stories. I mean, everybody loves it. I mean, these comeback stories are, are timeless, but there is something special going on now, I think in this season of where we are, you know, across the country and really across the world. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, some of the themes in this story and why it feels very timely is that, um, you know, it's, it's about a person who, who was living for himself. 
who was seeking to gain the world at the expense of his soul. It was about cars and money and homes and respect, um, purely respect, purely out of his power and strength and his personal accomplishments. And when he achieved those things, he was as empty as he was before. Um, and uh, he was an un angry young man, um, you know, that uh, was living for the world and found no, um, no peace there. And, uh, you know, through his, um, and when I say he had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ, he collapsed in the locker room and, you know, everyone thought he was dead, his heart stopped. And he heard God's voice, he smelled hell, God spoke to him, and he awoke and said to his trainer, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me, I believe. And immediately went to the shower room to cleanse himself. And he quit boxing, became a pastor. And I think maybe those parts of his story are not relate, you know, completely relatable. It's not like any of us decide to wake up and start a church. But there are aspirational and relatable elements to his story that people are going through right now. Separation from family, focus on self, disconnected from a community, angry, um, unfulfilled, and, and sometimes even desperate and not even knowing why. And th those are the elements of George's story. I think people that are in that state or know someone in that state can really be encouraged by to just, in an aspirational way, watch George take this journey and become a new, a new person. Yeah. And I love this. There's something so powerful about people's personal stories and testimonies. And it seems like that's what your company really loves to highlight and showcase these specific stories um, and how God can change, you know, a life and put you on a brand new path. Yeah, we, we, look, we seek to have entertainment, okay? Because, you know, people go to the movie theaters and take time out of the day to be entertained and have a great time with family and friends. But we want people to invest that hour and a half or two hours and come out the other end a different person or at least thinking about um, ways that they can be a better friend or a better spouse or a better parent um, or, you know, to really kind of pointing the way to whether it be salvation or it be life transformation. Those are the kinds of stories we love. Oh, well, um, what would you, you know, at this point in time, we're getting ready to, to have this release. What do you hope people take away from this story and then, um, you know, hopefully take with them afterwards, long after? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, one, one of the things, or really there's two main things I want people to take away from this movie. One is um, specifically the, you know, George's uh, difficulty and anger and separation from family. Um and his and how God reconciled those things in his life. And I think for people, any of us, you know, we can always be a better something, a better, uh, you know, a better, like I said, a husband or wife or a better friend. And I want people to be inspired to think about those damaged or incomplete relationships in our lives and to think about really going after that reconciliation or reconnection. And then the second thing is for people to come out and think about someone else in their life that could really use that message. And, uh, you know, th that's what I'm hoping. I want people to come out, and, and we've seen this when we've shown the movie. People cheer, and they cry, and they laugh, and they're kind of on this emotional high. But what we really love is the, uh, is the residue, you know, that w what happens the next day and the next week. And uh, I'm hoping people take those things for themselves and then think of someone in their life that could really benefit from this message. Oh, I love that. Uh, I know it's hard to, to shuffle through all these stories and to figure out kind of the timeline of everything. I mean, what is next for you? Well, there is something really big um, that we've never done before. And it is a live action narrative musical about the birth of Christ, um, starring Antonio Banderas, um, Milo Mannheim from the, Di he's done that several Disney shows, um, Fiona Palomo, um, with music written by Adam Anders, who has written some of the biggest pop songs in the world over the last 15 or 20 years. So this is, you know, 
I don't know how to describe it, but it's sort of like the nativity story meets La La Land. Um, and it is bright and it is hopeful and it is colorful. Uh, it's also great drama because, you know, Antonio Banderas does an incredible job as King Herod, who's a threat to Mary and the baby. And there's intensity and joy and, you know, many, many amazing songs and great dance numbers. So it is just going to be a family Christmas event uh, that will hit theaters this November. And we're, and by the way, we're, we've rushed and killed ourselves to make a teaser about this new movie called Journey to Bethlehem. And it will be playing in theaters in front of the George Foreman release on April 28th. Oh, good. Uh, oh, well, thank you for all that you do. We know this is not an easy job, um, but man, is it so worth it. And to see how people's lives have been constantly changed um, and, and to see God glorified in these amazing stories. It's just so wonderful. So thank you for taking some time uh, with me today. And uh, we will be praying that uh, people's lives are changed when this uh, story continues uh, to get out. Because again, I think people know George Foreman. They certainly know his name, but I don't think they know how big of an impact he has had for the kingdom as well. Well, thank you for those very kind words. It was, a, again, a pleasure to be here. All right. Well, we look forward to talking again soon then at these uh, future projects as well uh, later on in the year. Yes. Oh, super excited about what Rich and his team are working on next. In the meantime, you will not want to miss Big George Foreman. Go see it in the theaters while you can. Now, next week, we go from drama to comedy. Shonda Pierce is known as the Queen of Clean. And next week, I speak with her about her new film, Roll With It. Okay, Lord, I know you're a very, very, very busy person, and I appreciate that. But I really, really, really would appreciate it if you would unlock my stinking door. Really? There's a lot about this day that really sucks. How can I possibly owe $20,000 to this county? Money, you haven't paid your property taxes in, like, well, uh... Never. That's the answer to your prayers right here. $10,000 first place prize? Oh, come on, Jackson. Bonnie, you can sing. Welcome, Welcome to the Cheatham County Karaoke Showdown. Don't count me out. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm your host, Carly Boyette, and I look forward to seeing you again right here on your Christian Television Network.